Well, guys, it's snowing. October 31st. Here I am in a onesie. Looking thick as hell, coming back from a company dinner. What have I done? What have I done? Hey, everyone, and welcome back to the channel. I hope you enjoyed the video of me drunk and in my onesie. Obviously, that's why I wasn't able to record the other night. Uh, although it would have been a lot of fun with me in that mental state. Anyways, I hope uh, my pain is entertaining to you all. You're all going to benefit from it anyways, because as a result of my seasonal depression, I'll probably make more YouTube videos. With that being said, we've got two more in the systems design series, so let's finish off the first of those two. Okay, let's get started. So today we're going to be talking about real-time updates. And the gist of a real-time update is that basically, so far, you know, we're all familiar with HTTP requests, right? Which is that we have some client and it can communicate with a server by sending it some type of data. But when it comes to it, unless the client specifically asks for some data, how can we make sure that the client is able to just receive data while basically always being on standby to do so? This is relevant in things like messaging apps, stock trading platforms, notification services. Basically, we don't wanna have to make the client ask all the time. It would be a lot better if the server could just go ahead and push data right to it. Well, why don't we want the client asking all the time? Well, let's discuss that quickly because the first option that we could technically do to achieve this type of thing is going to be polling, where every few seconds, basically the client, which could be my mobile device, is gonna go ahead and request an update from a server. So, you know, every four seconds, on repeat forever, you know, da -da 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 we are going to request from the server. And what's gonna happen is that this thing is gonna get overloaded. And that's bad because now we're wasting a ton of resources on both our client and our server sending all of these requests when the majority of them are probably just gonna come back with no new information. And so again, that's not great. To give an analogy for this type of thing, think about it like this. You went on a date with a girl, She's ghosting you. Every two minutes you keep checking your phone to see if uh, she's finally responded. Obviously she hasn't, we've all lived this out. And uh, now you've wasted all your time and energy trying and your phone battery is dying too. So let's move on to some smarter things that we can actually do in order to achieve this goal. So the first thing that we're gonna be talking about is long polling. So long polling is a little bit different than polling. It might be named after my phallic region, but assuming it's not, the general gist is that it's very similar to a pull request, except if there's no data present, the server will actually basically keep track of the fact that there is a long pull request that is active and will hold on to it until data is actually available. So a couple of key things about long polling. For starters, this is unidirectional, right? The client is basically reaching out to the server and then the server passes it data back. You can't like also pass data back to the server via a long poll on some sort of consistent interval. Basically, it's just one long poll returns some amount of data and then it's closed out. So upon completion, we need to create another. And we'll discuss the pros and cons of that in a second, but basically it would look like this. Long poll request. You know, maybe we'll wait five seconds until some data comes in and then we'll finally respond. And then when we do, what we'd have to do is say, okay, we're done with this guy now. Time to start another long pole. And now the cycle begins anew. So this can be, like I mentioned, potentially good and a bad thing that you basically have to restart these connections all the time. For starters, uh, it's kind of expensive, right? Because every single time that we initiate a long pole, we have to send over a bunch of headers that get involved in HTTP requests. Uh, additionally, just you know, creating uh, connections on the server is expensive. We need to allocate a port, things like that. Um, and then additionally, uh, there are a couple of good things with this. Uh, the first is that long polling is just generally well supported. It's an older technology. It's supported by all browsers. So you don't really have to worry about that. But also, generally speaking, let's say as opposed to something like a persistent connection, let's say you know data is only coming in every 20 minutes or so. It would be good that you know we can only submit very few long polls relative to holding a persistent connection and wasting a bunch of resources, but we'll talk about that more in a second. So that is going to bring us to option two, which is going to be WebSockets. So WebSockets, keep in mind, are different than webhooks. If you've heard of that, webhooks are just like a, a callback on HTTP requests. But basically the idea is that unlike long polling, first of all, WebSockets are bi-directional, right? So that means that 
both the client can communicate to the server and the server can actually communicate back to the client via a WebSocket. And additionally, unlike long polling, they are also persistent. So as you can see right here, we've got these two-sided arrows on the bottom of our screen, and they are basically going to stay alive the entire time that those two are connected. You don't basically have to tear them down and bring them back up all of the time. And so that's really good because it means that, you know, basically you send over some headers or some metadata on your original WebSocket connection, but after that, all data being sent over that WebSocket doesn't require any extra metadata. And that, of course, is going to make it a little bit faster to send those packets over the network. That being said, like I mentioned before, uh, it is the case that, you know, let's say we've got all three of these connections right here, and this guy is only sending data every five minutes. Well, it means basically now that we are persisting this connection between all three of these devices and the server that entire time, and that can just waste a bunch of resources. There's no reason to necessarily persist these connections if we're very rarely sending information. Additionally, it is worth noting that if the connection goes down, right, you know, if this guy gets broken for some reason, we have some sort of network partition, then WebSockets is not going to reestablish that for us. We're going to have to add some extra client-side logic to put it back together. And the only reason I mention that now is because in option three, this is actually fixed for us. In server sent events, which is going to be our third potential choice, one thing to note is that like WebSockets, the connection is persistent, but it also reconnects automatically for you. That's technology built into server sent events, which is kind of nice. Uh, unlike WebSockets and similar to long polling, uh, this is a unidirectional connection. So it's only gonna be from server to client, that's where the data is being passed. If you wanted to go and pass data from the client to the server, you would have to do that just via a normal HTTP request or something like that. And so, of course, with all of these technologies, there are some pros and cons associated, which we will now talk about. So basically the big pro of a server sent event is that similar to WebSockets due to the nature of a persistent connection, there is less overhead in sending data and additionally just actually making more connections which is very nice. Of course, it has the same cons of WebSockets in the sense that, well, now we can waste resources if this connection is largely inactive. But the big final point that I wanna focus upon with server sent events is this piece of actually reestablishing connections for you. Now you may think, oh, that's super convenient. You don't have to write this yourself. You could potentially screw it up, but is it always a good thing? So now let's think about a hypothetical situation which i will call the thundering herd problem and no i am not referring to my farts so the first thing is imagine we've got like these three clients over here and at time zero client one is going to connect right that's going to establish the service end event and i should actually just have the arrow going the other direction because that's the way service end events are going so time zero and then we're going to make another one at time five. Now client two is connecting and then client three is going to connect at time 10. So let's imagine now that these guys have all connected and they're all getting data from the server. But all of a sudden, you know, who knows, I come along and dump some water on here and then bang, this guy goes down at time 12. And then it's going to come back up at time 15. Do, 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 do. So now time 15, we're good again. So keep in mind that all of these connections were broken in that meantime, and they're now all going to try and reconnect. And they're going to do so at time 15. Da, 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 da. Now, if there are only three devices, in reality, this probably isn't a very big deal. However, uh, in an actual big scalable web application, you might have hundreds of these clients. And so all of them connecting to this server at the same time, well, that can add a bunch of extra load. And now this thing's gonna go back down again and it's not gonna be able to come back up. And that's known as the thundering herd. So because of the nature of all of these connections trying to reestablish themselves, we can overload that server, it can go back down, and that would be a big problem. So how could we fix something like this? Well, actually, if you've watched this entire series, which would be awesome, then you've seen the episode I made on Raft. Uh, and one of the things basically that Raft does in order to avoid something like a thundering herd problem when it comes to leader elections is basically the timeout of trying to reconnect or trying to start a new leader election actually has a random jitter, right? So, you know, let's say we pick a random number between zero and five seconds when we think that the server is back up and then we try and reconnect. So rather than, you know, restarting everything at time 15, maybe this guy restarts at time 18, this guy restarts at time 16, 
and this guy restarts at time 19. And then that way, you know, the connections are actually spread out a little bit. We're more likely to not overload the server, which would be a good thing. I'm not sure this is actually something that practically you'll have to experience too much, but it is something worth considering when you think to yourself, oh, it's so good that we just automatically reconnect to a server. So let's quickly talk about a conclusion here. I'm not actually going to go into all three of the technologies and say, hey, one thing is just like clearly better than the other, but there are certain traits of each type of technology and each of those traits has its own pros and cons. So the two that I'm going to be focusing on for this conclusion are persistent connections and automatic reconnections. So keep in mind that if you do have a persistent connection, as is the case with WebSockets and also service and events, Basically what that means is it should in theory be pretty fast, you're not sending a ton of headers over the network and additionally you're not establishing a ton of connections. That being said, if it is the case that you're not sending that much data from your server to your client or more so you're not sending data that frequently, then you could just be wasting resources and well, frankly, if we can avoid that, it would be a good thing. The other thing I want to be talking about is automatic reconnects, which while convenient, if we're not careful about them, can cause a thundering herd, as we just described in the last image. Well guys, I hope this one helps. I hope you have a great day, and I'm looking forward to finishing up this series and doing some real problems.